Good morning and welcome to our online worship for the Sunfield and Greenwood United Methodist Churches in Southern Illinois. I am Pastor Bill Wiggs and I'm here to share with you the joy of the Lord on this very unique Easter Sunday. The other voices you will hear today are members of my family. And if you have any prayer requests this morning that you would like us to lift up during our worship service, I invite you to either Facebook message me at my personal one or to comment in the bottom of the live stream and we have somebody monitoring that right now. If you want it to be a private prayer request, you can message that to me as well and that way uh, it won't get read out. So we can do that for you today. Uh, also, just a couple quick announcements for the members of the Sunfield Church. The upper rooms are in the office for anyone who wants to pick one up. If you do not have a key, uh, you can give me a call and we'll see uh, how we can get you one. Also, the flowers and worship today are going to be moved out to the pavilion after the service today where you can come by and pick them up for anyone who ordered them in advance. Also, the Linton change offerings, we intended to receive those today, our 50 pieces of silver kind of thing, and our 30 pieces of silver, but obviously we can't do that during worship. So the 30 pieces of silver offering can be brought to the church if you have a key and placed in the basket on the desk in the office. It will be picked up every single day, so don't worry about that. Or if you can't get it to us that way, give me a call and we'll get that done as well. Also, if you are wanting to send in your tithes and offerings, you can send them to Doug Bishop, or we have the online button on our Sunfield website, or the offering box that is also picked up very regularly. For the Greenwood Church, you can send your offerings and tithes to Dwight Hitt. Okay, any, any anything that I have? I don't know if any other announcements, I'm missing anything. All right. I also do want to encourage you that if you're watching our live stream and your church is unable to live stream, your church still has bills that they need to pay during this season where we're apart. And I would encourage you, if you're being blessed by this ministry, I'm thankful for that. But please remember your home church, as that is really important during this time as well. Well, let's, uh, let's begin to worship the Lord this morning. And uh, this is Easter Sunday, and so we do have a traditional call to worship. And for those of you who have been in church know, if I say Christ is risen, you say Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. All right, let us join in our call to worship. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ in the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters in Christ, on this most holy morning in which Jesus Christ passed from death to life, we worship as the church to celebrate the resurrection victory we have in Jesus Christ our Savior. The light of Christ has come into this world, overcoming the darkness of sin and death. Christ is our light and our salvation. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. Let us worship the Lord this morning. Was it a morning like this, when the sun still hid from Jerusalem, and Mary rose from her bed to tell the Lord that she thought was dead? Was it a morning like this, when Mary walked down from Jerusalem? And two angels stood at the tomb, bearers of news she would hear soon. Did the grass sing? Did the earth rejoice to feel you again? Over and over, like a trumpet on the ground, did the earth seem to pound? He is risen.
was in a morning like this when Peter and John ran from Jerusalem and as they raced toward the tomb beneath their feet was there a tune did the grass sing did the earth rejoice to feel you again? Over and over, like a trumpet underground, did the earth seem to pound? He is risen. Over and over, in a never-ending round, He is risen. Hallelujah. A trumpet underground did the earth seem to pound he is risen over and over in a never ending round he is risen hallelujah hallelujah was it a morning like this when my lord looked down on Jerusalem thanksgiving for the gift of your son Jesus Christ. We celebrate today that Jesus is alive for he rose from the dead and we thank you Father that because he lives we also will live. We ask Lord that you would inhabit the praises of your people wherever we are gathered today that we all might experience your love and grace and know your resurrection power. For it's in Jesus precious name that we pray. Amen. Well, we're going to be singing some of the, the great hymns for Easter, and there were those, as I said last week, who had asked me to tell you what number it was, because a lot of good Methodists have hymnals in their homes. So uh, number 322 we're going to sing, Up From the Grave He Arose. All right, let's sing together. Low in the grave he lay, Jesus my Savior, waiting the coming day, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose, with a mighty triumph for his foes, he arose a from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Vainly they watch his bed, Jesus my Savior. Rose a victor from 
from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Amen. Well, it's time for our children's sermon, so... All the kids, if you'll uh, get to where you can see the screen well, we're going to have a, a children's sermon here for our Easter service. And uh, I brought with me my uh, special Easter hat and get it on my head here. This may destroy my hair forever. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, my. I've got to get to where we can see that I have a face. There we go. Got on my jester's hat this morning. It's kind of like a clown for kids who don't know what a jester is. And uh, it's because, well, Satan thought he'd won. But what a joke we played on him as the Lord Jesus rose. Well, I'm going to tell you a story today about uh, some folks that uh, at first were very sad. Can you see my sad face here? We'll see. Oh, my. And then they became very surprised. <gasps> And of course, you saw that one up there. There it is. Then they became very, very happy. Yay. Now, the reason they were so sad hmm. was because Jesus, their friend, their Lord, had died on the cross. They had seen him die. They had seen him laid in a tomb. And early on Sunday morning, the disciples came to the tomb. First the, the ladies came, and then later the men, and they were so sad because they thought Jesus was gone, gone forever. But then when they got there, they saw that the tomb was open. It was open, and Jesus wasn't in the tomb, and there were angels there. And they told him that, well, Jesus had risen from the dead. He's not here. And so they were extremely surprised. But then, as they turned to leave, Jesus met them, and they were greatly happy because Jesus had rose from the dead. So I encourage you, kids, even when you are sad, remember that Jesus is alive, and he lives in our hearts today, and we can celebrate, and we can be happy because of that. Yay. Let's thank him this morning. Lord Jesus, we thank you and praise you for this day of Easter. We thank you for each of these children who are listening today. We ask, Lord, that you'd bring joy to their hearts. Help each of us to remember that even when we're sad, we have good news that you, Lord Jesus, are alive. Touch each home who's hearing this message today and help them to always be joyful in you. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Happy Easter, kids. I know it's not our usual Easter together, but this will have to do for now. All right, we're going to sing another hymn here. Christ the Lord is risen today. I maybe shouldn't have sat down. I don't know if I can do this one sitting down. It's 302 in our United Methodist hymnal. And I decided not to look them up in advance. They'll give you a little bit of time for those who are looking at home. If I can get my pages to turn, that is. There we go. <clears throat> Are we ready? Christ the Lord is risen today. Once he died our souls to 
save. Alleluia. Where's thy victory boasting grave? Alleluia. Soar we now where Christ has led. Alleluia. Following our exalted head. Alleluia. Made like him, like him we rise. Alleluia. Ours across the grave, the skies. Alleluia. Verse 6. King of glory, soul of bliss. Today we are looking at Matthew 28, verses 1 through 15, and then also 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 11. Matthew 28, verses 1 through 15, I'm reading from the New Living Translation, and I'm going to begin with the Gospel lesson from Matthew 28. Hear now the Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women, "'Don't be afraid,' he said." I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said he would. Come see where his body was laying, and now go quickly and tell his disciples that he is, has risen from the dead, and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened but also filled with great joy, and they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them, and they ran to him, grasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. As the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and told the leading priests what had happened. A meeting was, of the elders was called, and they decided to give soldiers a large bribe. They told the soldiers, you must say, Jesus' disciples came during the night while we were sleeping, and they stole his body. If the governor hears about it, we'll stand up for you, and so you won't get in trouble. So the guards accepted the bribe and said what they were told to say, and their story spread widely, widely among the Jews. And then from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 11, let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news I preached to you before. You welcomed it then, and you still stand firm in it. It is this good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you, unless, of course, you believed something that was never true in the first place. I passed on to you what was most important, and what had also been passed on to me. Christ died for our sins, just as the scripture said. He was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scripture said. He was seen by Peter and then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. 
Then he was seen by James and later by all the apostles. Last of all, as though I had been born at the wrong time, I also saw him. For I am the least of all the apostles. In fact, I am not even worthy to be called an apostle after the way I persecuted God's church. But whatever I am now, it is all because God poured out his special favor on me, and not without results. For I have worked harder than any of the other apostles, yet it was not I but God who was working through me by his grace. So it makes no difference whether I preach or they preach, for we all preach the same message you have already believed. This is the word of the Lord for his people today. Let us rejoice and be thankful for all Christ has done, is doing, and will do. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. Teach us from your word today that we may bring glory and honor to you. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, as we worship together today, we come to remember the sacrificial death of Christ our Savior and the joy and power of the resurrection. In the words of the Apostle Paul, we can hear this call to remembrance. Let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news I preached to you before. The church at Corinth had had a hard time holding on to the promise of resurrection, as so many people still do today. They saw death and decay around them, and it was hard for them to understand that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed to us in the last day. In their time, there were some teaching that when we die, we die, or that our bodies are gone forever, even if we live on in some disembodied state. In fact, the Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection, and so they had to be more confused than any of the other religious leaders that day, I would think. Now, this sounds quite a bit like things are today. For many in our world today, be they Christian in name or not Christian at all, the body seems to be of no consequence. It is simply a temporary structure for the true self that lives inside it. Under normal circumstances, many people see Easter as nothing more than an opportunity to maybe take an extra day off to hold spring festivals, to hunt Easter eggs, and eat too much chocolate. Well, none of that's going to happen this year. Well, maybe the eating too much chocolate will probably happen this year, and a few families, maybe in their basements, as I heard of one this morning, will hunt Easter eggs. Many in our world today wonder what all the hoopla over a man who was executed 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem is all about. What is it that causes Christians to worship someone who died so long ago? For others, the resurrection is nothing more than a mere myth. After all, Muslims believe that Jesus was a great prophet, but they deny that he is the risen Son of God. Many secularists today believe he was a good teacher, but certainly not God, and definitely died a long time ago. Even some liberal churches teach that Jesus did not rise physically, but only spiritually, whatever that means. All of these people deny the significance of Jesus' bodily resurrection, but the fact is that the tomb of Jesus Christ, empty, and the living body of Jesus Christ do, in fact, make all the difference in the world. The fact of the resurrection is of absolute importance if we are going to be believers in Jesus Christ. In fact, it is essential to the faith and hope that we have as Christians. But why? Why is the physical resurrection of Jesus so important to our faith? The Apostle Paul says the message of the death and resurrection of Jesus from the dead is the most important thing. And we must know and understand it and believe it. Christ's resurrection is an indispensable component of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If we were to read on in our text from 1 Corinthians, we would find these words from the Apostle Paul. 
If Christ has not been raised, then all our preaching is useless. Yeah. All our preaching is useless if Christ has not been raised. And your faith is useless, he says. And we apostles would all be lying about God, for we have said that God raised Christ from the grave. But that can't be true if there's no resurrection of the dead. And if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless and you are still guilty of your sins. Mm -hmm. What do you do with that, liberal churches that are teaching that it's only a spiritual matter? That's not the Christian faith. In that case, all who have died believing in Christ are lost. They're lost. And if our hope in Christ is only for this life, the apostle says, we are more to be pitied than anyone in the world because we believe. The apostle says that the resurrection of Christ is so important that without it, we are left without hope and our faith is in vain and the apostles are liars. And if our hope in Christ is only for this life. How sad is that for us? Where is the hope of Christ if it's only for this life? But why? Why is that so important that Christ has been raised from the dead? Well, Christ's resurrection fulfills God's supreme plan and purpose revealed in the scriptures. The promise of the sacrificial death and resurrection of the Savior is proclaimed throughout the text of the Old Testament. From the time of humanity's first sin and our falling away from God, a Savior was promised. The prophets of old proclaimed his coming death and resurrection as the one and only way for us to truly be free from the sin and death that is part of human existence. Paul says Christ's death and resurrection were in accordance with the scriptures. They fulfill the plan of God for us. The scriptures testify of God's plan of redeeming sinful human beings like you and me, of restoring the fallen creation through the death and resurrection of the Messiah. Paul goes on to say, So you see, just as death came into the world through a man, obviously Adam there, now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man. Jesus. Just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. But there is an order to this resurrection. Christ was raised as the first of the harvest, then all who belong to Christ will be raised when he comes back. Christ's death delivers us from sin, and his resurrection gives us victory over death, which was the result of sin. All this fulfills God's plan of salvation. But how do we know it's real? How do we know? Christ's resurrection was confirmed by eyewitnesses, by many eyewitnesses. In our gospel lesson today, we read of the encounter of the women who followed Jesus just before his death and all the way to the cross, in fact. And they have this encounter with the risen Lord on that first Easter Sunday. It says, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. After hearing the announcement that Jesus had risen from the angels, what a shock that would have been, they turn around, they start running away, and what, who do they run into but Jesus himself? Verse 9 says, Jesus met them and greeted them. This was not an accident. This was not a coincidence. He wanted them to see him right there. And it says, they ran to him, grasped his feet, and worshipped him. Jesus was alive. He was not just a ghost. You can't grasp the feet of a ghost. Your hands would go right through. You can only grasp the feet of someone who is actually physically there. The appearances of Christ were not just hallucinations. They were witnessed by over 500 people all at once whose testimony could be confirmed when Paul was writing his letter. Think about that. They didn't have any of the technology we have. So if they saw Jesus, 500 people saw him, guess what? He had to be there. Simple as that. There's no way around it. Jesus, who was previously skeptical, uh, James rather, who was previously skeptical of Jesus' claims to be the Messiah, became a devout follower after the risen Christ appeared to him. 
His own brother didn't believe. But then Jesus shows up, and when your brother shows up, you got to believe. Amen? Amen. Paul, who was previously antagonistic to Jesus, claims to be the Messiah, and who had even been involved in causing the death of Christians, became a zealous missionary after the risen Christ appeared to him. That's all good, right? That's all well and good. Those accounts of the resurrection are all found in Scripture. So how can we trust them? It's an old document. Well, many years ago now, I read uh, something that Chuck Colson had to say about this. Uh, if you're not familiar with him, most, most people are, but he was a former advisor to President Nixon. He was key, a key player in the Watergate scandal that brought down the Nixon administration. And uh, after his arrest and during his trial and imprisonment, he accepted Christ. And he said this, I know the resurrection is a fact, and Watergate proved it to me. Now listen, mm -hmm. how? Because 12 men testified they had seen Jesus raised from the dead. Then they proclaimed that truth for 40 years, never once denying it. Every one of them was beaten, tortured, stoned, and put in prison. Many were put to death. They would not have endured that if it weren't true. Watergate embroiled 12 of the most powerful men in the world, and they couldn't keep alive for three weeks. I love that. He says, you're telling me 12 apostles could keep alive for 40 years. That's absolutely impossible. Mm -hmm. Even those soldiers. Remember the soldiers? Here they are. They're at the tomb. The earthquake happens. The tomb opens up. They see Jesus, and they just are out cold, man. This freaks them out because they see him. But when they come back to themselves, they run into the city, and they tell what they've seen. And the religious leaders doing what they did at that time, protecting their own back porch, they paid them off. But even they couldn't keep the lie because we wouldn't know about it if those soldiers hadn't later told about it. Think about it. They saw him come out of the tomb. How can you keep that silent forever? Not even those who were paid to keep it silent could do it. Oh, the, they passed that lie around a bit, but it died out after a while because you can't get away from the absolute truth of the resurrection. Amen. Not only that, not only all of these witnesses, not only the understanding that 40 years is a long time to keep alive, how about 2,000 years? We know the resurrection of Christ is true because of the power it still has to change lives today. In him, all who believe are given new life. We are made new creatures because of the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You see, Christ's resurrection is the basis on which we stand forgiven and saved Jesus' victory over sin and death is the reason we can stand before the judgment of God, forgiven and righteous. When Jesus died on a criminal's death on the hill of Golgotha outside of Jerusalem, hope died with him that day. His disciples and many others had come to believe in him as Messiah. Then the scourge tore into his back and merciless nails were pounded through his hands and feet. When he died on the cross and was buried, the hope of so many was buried with him. But they did not know, they did not know that death and burial was the first movement in a wonderful symphony of salvation. His sacrificial death on the cross was a payment, not for his sins, for he had none, but for ours. It was the shedding of blood that was the atonement for our sins. He died in our place. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord, Romans 6.23 tells us. Mm -hmm. But without the resurrection, we would still be lost in our sins. It is because Christ has been raised from the dead that we have assurance or proof that God has completed our salvation. Because God vindicated Jesus by raising him from the dead. We know that his promises and forgiveness of sins are true. 
that we have been saved, rescued, and delivered. Because he lives, we have confidence that our salvation is not a pipe dream based on empty hopes, but on a firm expectation based on Jesus' resurrection from the dead. Because he lives, we live in newness of life, and we shall live eternally. Christ has been raised from the dead. He is the first of a great harvest of all the dead, the apostle says. So you see, just as death came into the world through a man, now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man. Just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the truth is, unless we hear that final trumpet blast, unless Christ returns before we die, all of us will face death. All of us have lost loved ones. But if they believed in Jesus Christ, and if we believe in Jesus Christ, then Jesus is just the first of the harvest that is to come of resurrection. For because he lives, we will live forever. We have eternal life in him, and someday... These bodies, though they decay, though they get sick, and though they die and are buried in the grave, will rise again and will be perfected, and we will live in glory with him. Amen. This body that he has given us is meant to be eternal. And because Jesus died and rose again, we, all of us, complete, will be risen to new life and live forever in the new heaven and the new earth. That is what the good news of Jesus is. Without that part of it, then we are without hope like those who do not believe. Anyone who preaches anything else has lost the truth of the gospel. And it is worse than having never believed. We will rise again because Jesus is alive. It is because of this that today we can proclaim with joy that Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. You at home, Christ is risen. Christ. I can almost hear you from here. <laughs> Christ is risen indeed. We believe that today. We proclaim that today. And we give glory and honor to God who's given us new life in his name. Thanks be to God for this gift of salvation and this new resurrection life. In the name of the Father who loves us and gave us his Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross and then didn't leave us alone but filled us with his Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Well, if you are a member of one of the two churches who are a part of this congregation, the Sunfield and Greenwood United Methodist Churches, most, if not all of you, will have received communion elements this week. There also is a paper in those communion elements that has in it our liturgy for today. Now, as United Methodists, we believe that Jesus is truly present whenever we receive Holy Communion in the bread and in the wine. We believe he's present with us. We also believe that Communion is meant to be a community meal. Today it's a little harder to do that. And so we gather in our homes. We gather with the few who are gathered here today. And you have received already consecrated elements in order that they are made ready for you to receive Holy Communion. I invite you to get those now and prepare them. Uh, you'll notice it has a couple of seals on it that you need to open up. Be careful so it doesn't spill there. And we will join in Holy Communion. You have your liturgy in front of you. Follow along and join with me and participate. Do you want to pass us ours? Yes. Okay. Going to pass up the communion here. All right, join with me. 
in our liturgy for Holy Communion today. Let us profess our faith in the triune God. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Christ invites to his table all who love him and earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in love and peace with their neighbors and who intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking in his holy ways. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another as we pray together, saying, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and weep over our numerous sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy on us, have mercy on us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, thus proving his love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant through his blood and in the power of your indwelling spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born again to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into this marvelous light. Jesus, on the night in which he gave himself up for us, took bread, and he gave thanks to you, Father, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body which is broken for you. Take and eat it in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, our Lord took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, 
We offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all who worship with us today as we receive these elements of bread and wine already consecrated before you. May we who partake of them receive the sacramental grace found in this holy meal and of the body and blood of Christ, that we may be his body in this world, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, with the confidence that we are indeed children of God, let us pray together the prayer our Savior taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, if you've not yet opened your cups, go ahead and do that at this time. And we'll be partaking together to the best of our ability. Mine's sticking a little bit. There's two separate seals. There's a clear two one and then a purple one. Yeah, two separate seals. I'm trying to get both of mine off here so we can get to it. I know if I'm having a little trouble, so are you at home. <laughs> Your hands shake like mine do, you're definitely having trouble. Right. I peeled off the clear seal first and got the wafer, and then I peeled the purple seal. Well, you know, I do things the hard way. Well, yeah. <laughs> but for those who haven't tried it yet, the clear seal will release the wafer. The body of Christ broken for us. Let us partake of it and be thankful. The blood of Christ poured out for us that we might be forgiven. Let us partake of it and be truly thankful for all Christ has done. Jesus be God. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you, you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given, given yourself to us. Grant, grant that, that we, we may go, go into the world in the strength of your spirit, spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, we've come to a prayer time in our service this morning, and I have just a few prayer requests that were given to me prior to coming in this morning. Got to get to the right sheet here. We need to be in prayer today for the family of Janet Eisenhower, who died suddenly this week. Also, during this season of social distancing and stay-at-home orders, we need to be praying for those with addictions, that they might uh, not relapse, and that if they have relapsed, that they might find the strength in God to, uh, to be able to get a handle on this again. Also, be in prayer for those who deal with anxiety and depression during this time. Also need to be in prayer for Mary. We've been praying for her the last couple of weeks. A uh, little update on her. She has been moved to a rehab now. And after the uh, mandatory quarantine, they'll be working with her. She is talking and doing as well as can be expected right now. Also pray for baby Nyla. Uh, she needs our prayers right now. Also, uh, we need to be in prayer for expectant mothers today. There are many who we know are expecting babies and received word this morning that Beth Lazenby's niece, Sarah Leanne, is currently in labor. Oh, so wow. we should be getting an announcement of a baby pretty soon, and we're looking forward to that. Tomorrow, our daughter Sarah will go to the hospital, and Mike gets to go with her, thankfully. And uh, about 8.30 tomorrow night, uh, they'll be inducing so that we will be able to have our uh, Elizabeth Grace soon. So we need to be in prayer for them as well, and just pray that God will bring a safe delivery. Uh, we need to continue to pray for all those who work in our medical field and all those who are considered essential workers who have to be in public. 
We need to pray for the COVID-19 crisis itself as there are many who are sick throughout the world and the doctors and scientists are working on a cure for that. So we do need to lift them up to the Lord. Do we have any prayer requests that came no. in? No prayer requests came in during the time. I must have got them all beforehand. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you today on this Easter as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask, Father, that you would be with those who mourn today and remind them of the hope of the resurrection as you wrap them in the arms of your love and grace. We pray for all those today who are dealing with depression or anxiety during this time of social distancing and stay-at-home orders and Lord, just the general overall anxiety level that many are in right now due to this crisis. We ask, Lord, that you would be with them and give them strength. We ask, Father, that you'd be with those who are dealing with addiction, that this might not be a time that they uh, fall back into that addiction, but Lord, that you would give them the strength in order to stay firm and stay sober in this. We pray for those who have already uh, fallen back into their addictive patterns. We ask God that you would deliver them, that you'd give them peace, that you would work within their hearts and minds and whatever is causing them to turn to their addiction. Lord God, would you heal that in them? Father, we believe that you can heal our hearts, you can heal our minds, that you can heal every part of our being, that you can heal our bodies. And so, Lord, we just ask that you would touch each and every heart Heal everything that is broken in them, that they might be whole, and that they may know the joy of your salvation. Lord God, we lift up Mary to you. We ask, Father, for your continued touch on her life and on Delton's life and on the whole family. We ask, Lord God, that you would give them strength and encouragement. We lift up baby Nyla to you today, Lord, and we just ask that you would be with her and uh, just bring your strength to her family and your healing power. Lord God, we pray for all of the expectant mothers. We ask, Lord, that you would protect them and care for them. We pray for Sarah Leanne as she has her baby today. And we pray for our Sarah as she goes to the hospital tomorrow night. Would you protect these women? Would you protect their children? Lord, would you bring this joy into these families that comes? For, Lord, we know that every child, every single child is a gift from you and is well loved by you. Lord, bless these families now in Jesus' name that they may experience your power and your love in the midst of everything that's going on. Lord God, we do pray for all of our healthcare workers, all of those who are expected to go to work every day despite this virus. We ask, Lord, that you would keep them healthy, that you would heal the sick, and Lord, that you would pour out your healing power on the nations. We pray for our military men and women as they continue to serve, especially those who are dealing with this virus. We ask, Lord, that you would keep them strong. We pray for our leaders, Lord, our president, our Congress, our vice president, and all of our state and local leaders, that you give them great wisdom today. We lift up to you all of the congregations of the Christian faith throughout the world today on this Easter Sunday. Lord God, would you help us, even in our dispersal around the communities that we are from, would you help us to know the joy of your resurrection? Be with our church leaders as well. Be with Bishop Beard and give him wisdom. Be with our superintendent, Stan, and give him wisdom and strength in this time. And help us, Father, to always know you and to love you and proclaim your truth wherever we go. Pour out your spirit on all who worship with us today, that we may know the absolute joy of our salvation. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to close this morning with Because He Lives. It is 364 in the hymnal. All right, let's sing it together. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died to buy my pardon, an empty grave is there to prove. My Savior lives. 
Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future, and life is worth the living just because he sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives but greater still the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds a future. And life is worth a living just because he lives. Across the river, I'll fight life's final war with pain. And then as death gives way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory and I'll know he reigns because he Because he lives, really sing it out. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth a living just because he lives. Amen. Do you believe that today? Amen. Well, we thank you for joining us for this Easter worship celebration. Although we are online, we know that the Holy Spirit is with us, and we know that in him we have the resurrection to eternal life. And so we can proclaim with the joy of the church through all the ages, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen indeed. Glory to God. Amen. And may the Lord bless you today. Let us go forth experiencing his grace, his peace, his love, and the joy of his resurrection today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.